Were there any lessons that you found particularly interesting as you kind of jumped from those areas, you know, both from PhD to industry to, to startup land, or as you jumped from hardware to data to, um, to I, I think you mentioned you also had some, you know, machine learning uh, research yeah. positions. Yeah. So one of the things, you know, at least for me, I'm, I'm kind of a systems person, Like even on the machine learning side, I still consider myself a systems person. So I always think about like, what are the, the first principle systems thinking? And that's kind of been like the guiding principles. And I, I, I feel that way when you build a company too, right? And in some ways, um, you know, when you're building a company, you're trying to engineer a system that will build a product that you want, right? So it's just like, they're all kind of the same type of problem, right? You're trying to figure out like, how do you actually engineer the system? And it's just the system being engineered is slightly different. Um, and, you know, for me, like doing first principles, thinking of what we want to build, why do we want to build it was a very important aspect of it. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. I, I really, you know, empathize with that, you know, systems mind as well. I, you know, personally identify with that. Um, one of my advisors, Kayvon, uh, he's, you know, classically a graphics researcher, but, but also um, describes himself like the first sentence. He's like, I'm a systems mind who, who also loves graphics um, and, and computer graphics. So, so that's, that's really interesting. Yep. Um, yeah, it's kind of the way I, I think about it too. It's like I'm a systems person who likes to work with you know computer vision stuff or embedded systems or, or whatever. It is like how do we actually solve the systems issues? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. I, I love also thinking about those like broader like cross cutting issues. Like you're not just looking at one algorithm or one uh, model, but you know the, the cross cutting issues um, yeah. from like like I think in slide two of your presentation from like you know data collection to to all these other things um speaking of which what topics do you think are kind of underemphasized in ml research or ml sys research these days i know you mentioned that there's a lot of focus placed on the model part um but what other things do you think are you know maybe falling by the wayside um because of that overemphasis on kind of this one step in the pipeline yeah i, I mean i think a lot of these things have like some you know i think it's all changing and there's more and more stuff around this but I really think like model lifecycle management, like deployment and like, especially, you know, a lot of times like we think about models as being static, right? Like, oh, you built this model, now we achieved this level of efficiency. The, the world actually is like constantly evolving and changing. So like accounting for drift and, and things like that, especially in like real world statistics is, is an interesting problem that I think people are trying to look at, but I still don't think it, it holds the same level of weight as, you know, building new architectures or getting better efficiency at certain data sets. Um, that I have the deployment side, um, and I think, you know, an area that's you know, personally important to me is just like embedded machine learning, I think still doesn't get nearly as much attention as it, as it needs to get over the next, you know, few years. What do you think are kind of the core problems there? I know we were talking a little bit about, um, kind of before, um, about this class that you're teaching at Stanford. Could you talk a little bit about, you know, what's really exciting for you there? Um, what, what can we expect to see kind of the next few years? Yeah, so I think part of the reason that a lot of embedded machine learning actually doesn't get a lot of attention is a lot of the core problems are actually very similar, right? It's like, oh, how do you build smaller, faster models, right? It's like, it's relevant to everybody. Uh, but interesting things happen when you start going to like tiny ML scale where you're like, my model now needs to be 100 kilobytes, right? But you're not just talking about a smaller model, you're talking about a model that's like orders of magnitude smaller than most models that people people use. Um, so I think there is a big paradigm shift, even though it's like similar things, like you're doing quantization, building smaller models, whatever it is, there is a shift when you have to move like a 10 kilobyte model or a hundred kilobyte model. Um, there's also another level of shift when you start thinking about running, you know, tiny machine learning models with ambient energy, right? Where you don't actually have batteries or you have batteries that need to last for years because they're deployed on some sensor somewhere. Um, and I think those are the, the areas that they're, they're kind of this big overlap between systems and machine learning, but in like the, the embedded systems and machine learning domain.